look at the view of the Encore and the wind. What's going on everyone, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. We're playing at the Encore uh, 2 5 again. And if you're wondering why I'm playing here so much, you will be seeing a lot of Encore stuff. One, the 2 5 structure is really good with 1500 deep buy ins. Secondly, I'm really close. Uh, I walk there, and that's kind of like my commute, is, and it's kind of my exercise for the day. But I just finished streaming uh, one of the events, the WCB bracelet events, unfortunately, didn't cash today. But we're heading to the 2 5 again where you never know what just might happen. Yeah, gonna definitely try to mix up more casinos around, but considering how close it is, literally right there we're obligated to uh play there for sure maybe hit up resorts world next later tonight potentially see how this session goes and go from there but uh yeah also haven't actually hit up the venetian yet never played there yet so i also kind of want to check out that room so for now encore two five if you're new to the channel or you want to support the vlog hit that subscribe button hit that like button it's always much appreciated helps the channel grow and we'll go from there let's get in some hands let's try to run it up <laughs> last video was a banger we're back at the deep stack 2-5 here at the win, and one of the first hands in, we have pocket nines in the hijack. There's a plus one player who opens the $20, folds around to me, and I think we can go either way with a raise or a call, but you know this channel isn't all about calling and being passive. We choose the more aggressive route and size up to $60. Action folds around to him, and he defends with about $700 left in his stack. The flop comes ace, 10, three, two diamonds, and a spade. He checks to me, and on a board with two cards over our pair, we could definitely just slow down and check this one, but I decided to throw out a bet of $40. He thinks about it for a little bit before making the call. Let's see a turn. The turn's a seven of spades, bringing the back door flush draw. He checks to me again, and we're not gonna do anything but check this one back, hoping to get to showdown. The river is now the four of spades. The spades gets there, and now he thinks about it for a while and ultimately throws out a bet of $100. It's a pretty annoying spot to be in, and ultimately, I think about it for a while, folding could certainly be an option, but folding's just a little boring. We just make a crying call, hoping to bluff catch against some sort of missed straight draw. I throw out a chip for a call, and he shows us five six of spades. Runner runner spades, get some paid, nice hand. In the next hand with king jack off suit in the low jack, there is a player to my right who opens it up to $20. Not gonna put in a raise this time, I just make the call, and the button comes along with the call as well. Three ways the flop comes, king, seven, five, rainbow. The player on my right puts in a continuation bet of $25, with top pair, decent kicker, not gonna go anywhere besides making the call, and the button actually comes along and calls as well. So still three ways, the turn is the five of hearts. Now the player on my right checks, and with top pair, good kicker, gonna bet a little bit larger now, considering we're three ways. I throw out $100 in here, and the button player is the only one that makes the call. He covers me by a bunch, looks like he has two to three, four thousand dollars in stack. The river is now another five. It's essentially the nuts, and now I have a decision to either check or bet small, because we really don't lose to a whole lot. I put in a down bet of $65. And he doesn't take too long before putting in some more chips for a raise. He puts in 20 black chips, effectively puts me all in. And now we're just put into a pretty horrendous spot again early on in the session. There's a very slim chance of him having a five in his hand for quads or pocket sevens for a boat considering how this hand is played given all three streets. But still, it's very relevant that I'm only calling about 1300 more in my stack in a $300 pot for a chop. Putting in 4x than the amount that's in the middle just to hope to get it all back is pretty risky and pretty awful. He can sometimes just slow play bigger full houses, so I guess he's a little bit uncapped versus me where I'm only capped to just a jack. Ultimately, we're only 15 minutes into the session and it's just a horrible spot to be in. I go over all of my options and think about it for quite some time before reluctantly letting go of my cards and fold. Pretty miserable to do that with essentially what may be the second nuts, but you just never know. Calling $1,300 to hoping to win the my $1,300 back it just isn't the best price to be given. In the next spot that we're in, ace jack of spades on the button, I raise it up to $20 when action folds to me. Only the big blind defends and makes the call. The flop comes jack, 10, nine, rainbow. He checks and with top pair, top kicker on a very dynamic board, I throw it a bet of $25 here. There's a lot of draws and worse pairs that we can get value from. This big blind player decides on a call. 
The turn is the six of clubs. He checks to me, and here I think betting twice is a little too thin. Probably can sometimes bet smaller, but I decided to check it back and play some paw control on a very dynamic board. The river is now another six, so board is paired. Pretty good card for us, all things considered. Now he throws out a bet of $80 and action is on to me. Is there any value in raising here and maybe targeting a hand specifically like Queen Jack or King Jack? I think better of it and just not going to raise. It seems a little too marginal, so I just toss in a chip for a call. And good thing we didn't raise him. He only shows us King Queen, flopped the nuts straight and held all the way. Definitely happy to not lose more in this hand where it was a monster flop for the both of us. So this session hasn't really gone off to the start that we were hoping for, but with pocket nines once again in the hijack, let's try to turn things around. There's an ungun player who limps. I raise it up to $25. Action folds to this limper who decides on a call. The flop comes 10, four, five, two hearts and a spade. She checks to me and given those two low cards, it feels like it smashes her limping range more than me. I try to slow play and just check back. The turn is now the queen of spades. So another card over our pair, it brings in two flush draws as well. She throws out a bet of $60 over betting the pot. And sometimes I think here we can just relax a little bit and fold, but considering we just haven't won any hands so far to start the session, it seems a little boring to do so. So I just make the call and defend one time. Let's see a river. The river is the six of clubs. So predominantly all of the flush draws break out, but it does bring in some two pair combos and some straight draws. She once again throws out a bet of $135. And for the fourth time in this session, we have quite the spot. Given her bet sizing, it seems like she's essentially only repping two pair, like four or five, or sets that she absolutely can have. Seems like lower limit players always limp small pocket pairs early on, and it's definitely more believable that she has two pair plus versus a missed draw. So for this price, facing a big river bet, we're gonna let our cards go. It's pretty marginal, we only have third pair anyways, so we let it go, and she does end up telling the table she did have two pair plus. Not the best start so far, to say the least. Time to turn things around. We look down at two ducks, pocket deuces in the small blind, action folds to the button who raises to $20. I make the call and the big blind folds. The flop is pretty good. It's nine, five deuce. Bottom set is always good for us. I check and he throws out a bet of $25. Definitely time to start putting money in here. Check raising with bottom set definitely is the play. So I size to five X his bet, $100. He thinks about it for not too long and tosses in a call for 75 more. Going to a turn, which is the five of clubs. We boat it up and I think the best play to do here is to check, maybe induce a bet from draws, but we definitely effectively have the nuts at this point. So I check and he ends up taking the bait and throws out a bet of $125. This player has 400-ish dollars behind, and I think I have him drawing dead for the most part. So I think that we can just call here, hope he hits his draw, and he's gonna commit his stack regardless. So I decide to just make the call, hoping to see a draw completing river. The river is uh, just not a good one. It's a five. Somehow we have severely downgraded from a very strong full house to essentially only a pair of deuces. Remember when I said we have him drawing dead? Now, almost any hand beats us, essentially just a pair of deuces. I check, he snap checks it back, which is totally okay. I show my hand, not expecting to be good here as I only have fives full of deuces, and he somehow mucks. So, happy to have this go my way somehow, but pretty gross way to win the first pot of the session. So after winning with fives full of deuces, Looks like the tides are turning and momentum shifting. We look down at ace 10 of clubs in the small blind. There is a middle position open to $15. I saw him raise three, four suited preflop the one hand earlier. So when there are three players that are in position of him to make the call, we're in the small blind, we're out of position. With $60 in the middle, we're definitely going to size up here since everyone's playing extremely deep. I put in a three bet and size to $120. Action folds to the middle position player who decides on a call. Everyone else folds, thanks to isolate the field a little bit. Going to a flop, which comes queen, five, seven, two clubs. We have the nut flush draw and one over. Definitely a good flop for us. I size up to $200 with my draw and over card, and he ends up making the call with about $800 behind. 
going to a turn which is the nine of clubs bink city for us always nice to immediately get there with our draw in a very big pot no sweat now as we hit our draw and i throw out a very small bet to just try to extract more money from him set up a river shove as well if he makes the call on this turn i size to 230 dollars and this bet makes him go deep into the tank sadly we don't get the news we wanted to see he folds very unfortunate as we thought this really small turn bet would entice him enough to make the call, but all things considered, no complaints. This is our second hand one all session. <laughs> For the last interesting hand of note, with ace queen off suit, we're in the cutoff and there's a hijack open to $20 on my right. Definitely gonna put in a three bet. I size up to $60 and now action falls to the small blind player who has almost $4,000 in his stack, pretty large stack to say the least. He thinks for a while and he looks like he's thinking about cold four betting, which would be pretty gross to face um, with this hand. But ultimately he just makes the call. Hijack actually folds. So we're going to a flop very deep in position. The flop comes ace five, nine, two heart and a club. He checks to me and on ace high boards, we're loving this, we're going for value. We're betting this all the time anyways. So I see bet $55 and he makes the call. The turn is the three of clubs, two flush rows out there. And once again, he checks, going to potentially exercise my option to check here. I know it's very surprising, but sometimes we gotta mix in some checks. Can't bet every single street every single time. I put in a check and slow down, let's see a river. The river is the deuce of hearts. The front door flush does get there, but when he checks to me for a third time, I feel really good about my one pair now. I'm essentially just betting for value against hands like ace jack or ace 10, so seems pretty thin, but regardless, we throw out $115. He doesn't take too long before just making the call. I show my hand, ace queen, top pair, queen kicker. He also shows ace queen offsuit as well. We're gonna chop this one up, anticlimactic to say the least, but still ending up in the black for the session. All right, we're out, wrapping up the session. All things considered, things, it didn't go great. We won two hands overall the whole session, which isn't really amazing, not ideal when you're playing poker, but ultimately uh, booked a very, very small L of minus $91 in for 2,500 out for 2,409. But all things considered, only winning two hands, not the worst result in the world. We're actually heading to the Venetian right now. First time checking that place out, so be on the lookout for the next vlog. Like once again, starting up this session very, very late. This Venetian one starting at around midnight. Maybe we'll find a lot of action. We'll see. You'll find out in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys next time. Peace.